Hey, Blue Table fans, time for one of a couple of uh, business rambles that I'm going to do this morning. Guess what? Giving MWG some love. Mmm, we love Mini War Gaming. Definitely go check them out. They have a lot going on. Those guys really are, really are quite brilliant. So, uh, a recent kind of big announcement is Mini War Gaming is uh, doing away with the online retailing of Games Workshop products. And so I watched their video, and uh, I, I'll probably put a link in the liner notes here about that in case you haven't seen it yet. And I think it's, it's, very, it's very well thought out, and a lot of people have asked me, well, what's your take on that? And uh, so, of course, I'm going to chime in, and, uh, but my general philosophy is I, I look on the bright side of things. I look for um, what is called, uh, oh, what was the name for it, like equivalent benefit. So every time something bad happens to you, there is actually something good that you can get out of that. And uh, that is uh, otherwise known as looking for the silver lining. And there really is something to that. Uh, because you, you never know, uh, it, like it may seem bad at the time, but it may be the best thing that ever happened to you. So anyway, uh, but uh, let's go dig down a little bit deeper. Let's talk about what's called a corporation. And um, this comes from uh, I don't know how you say it in Latin, but corp or corpus maybe, I don't know, uh, it means body. So when you incorporate, it literally means you're giving something a body. And so that is, in the U.S., that's a legal thing that you do where you say, this business that I'm running, this isn't me, it has its own being, it has, it's its own legal entity. So, you know, do you have a problem with, uh, you know, uh, Woody McPherson? Or do you uh, have a problem with the company that Woody McPherson owns? Uh, by the way, I just made that name up. So anyway, so you have a corporation, which I've represented by this lopsided uh, rectangle here. So maybe it's a, like a guy that looks more like a house. So anyway, uh, so you have a, in fact, I don't even know if you guys can see that. So uh, you have a corporation. And uh, what happens is there's shareholders in this corporation. So Blue Table Painting, for example, is a corporation. And uh, we have shareholders, and the shareholders expect the company to make money. So the people running the company have a moral and legal obligation to make as much money for the shareholders as, as they can and to look out for their interests uh, because you are, in a way, a steward of that, of that company. And uh, you have a responsibility to you know, run it effectively and not you know, run it into the ground, for example, uh, just because you feel like it for some reason. So, anyway, um, now let's go back to Games Workshop, because I have a long history with them. Uh, well, no, not, not really. I owned a game shop in Oregon in the late 90s, and um, so what happens is, uh, in order to, so you got Games Workshop, in order to get their product at a wholesale price, you have to have a contract. So let's say here's GW, and all these, so I'm going to make like a little conveyor belt here, and all these packages are coming out of this conveyor belt. This is their product, right? And it used to be that Games Workshop followed the industry model, which is they were a producer or a manufacturer, and then they sent things to distributors because they didn't have a distribution network. And that's, uh, that's kind of a partnership. So then the products would go to a distributor, I'm going to write D-I-S-T here. And then uh, what happens is the distributor has an asset that the producer doesn't have. They have uh, basically the phone numbers and accounts with a zillion smaller companies. So probably many, many thousands of little companies. And these companies basically, they make an order through the distributor and the distributor sends them the product. So back in the 90s when I was getting into Warhammer for the first time, uh, I actually didn't order through Games Workshop, and I can't remember, but I don't think they always had a really good online presence, or they didn't have a way to order directly so much. Uh, Games Workshop just said, you know what, guess what, we'll just go through the distributors because they have this uh, network of, of people. And, but what happened was that uh, the distributors, um, uh, they, at least in my experience, I always tried to order things and the distributor took too long to get it. They didn't have it in stock. 
and they just and this wasn't Games Workshop's fault. It was that the distributor didn't order Games Workshop products. They didn't order this entire line, and it could have been just a functional thing, meaning that Games Workshop. Um, that their line was so big that a distributor would have to make this really heavy investment in it. So what happened is, I can't remember the exact date, it was, you know, maybe 2001 or something like that, where Games Workshop said, tell you what, we're not even going to go through distributors anymore. And there was a big fuss about this, because distributors, people that were relying on that, they, um, they all of a sudden, they were, they were wiped out. So um, what happened is Games Workshop then, they contacted the shops and they directly and said, tell you what, we'll be your, if you want Games Workshop stuff, let us be your distributor. Now my experience was all of a sudden now I had like this great fill rate. And in fact, it was, it was I actually had an account with Games Workshop the whole time. And, uh, and I, I have to say I didn't have a great experience with them. Uh, because I, I wanted to just call them up and order what I wanted and then uh, and have them just fill the order, but instead they're always like pressuring me to carry lines and to really stock it, which, and I, I understand that, uh, especially as the years went on, but the fact is I didn't have that kind of money. You know, they kept, they treated me like I was some kind of money bags, you know, that I just like, well, why, why don't you spend $5,000 and stock all this stuff, you know? And so, so anyway, but uh, then... There were still, um, they still dealt with some distributors. So what happens, but what they did is they made the distributors just like another retailer. So they didn't give them a better deal. Because the normal thing is uh, the a company, so let's just write C for a random company, they'll sell things to the distributor for like $45. And the MSRP, the retail price would be 100 right? And then what will happen is the distributor will sell it to the, they'll sell it to the independent shop for like 55. So they'll make five or 10% off of it. And then the shop sells it to you, the end consumer, right? So there's like, let's write times 1 million, right? A million gamers out there. And, uh, and then they sell it to you for, I don't know, whatever it is, 185. So, but way back when, Games Workshop said, first off, the distributors aren't carrying our stuff and they're not being reliable. We can't get our product out there and so it's creating all these problems. So we're just gonna, we're gonna be our own distributor. And uh, so what happened is, they, Games Workshop would sell to them, but only at the same price as these other guys. Do you see what I'm saying? So the distributor didn't get a special deal anymore. They were just whatever. Um, and so, uh, now I pause my tale to, uh, I pause my tale to talk about something different and hopefully help you see this in a more comprehensive way. Forge World. Forge World, right now, you can't get a wholesale. Nobody in the planet can get a wholesale account through Forge World. They're a direct only site where you go there and you pay full price. What's weird is Forge World stuff holds its value really well. So when we get in secondhand Forge World stuff, most of the time you can sell it again for 100% retail value. So way back when, okay, so that's all I had to say. So, but no, but do, do you notice nobody's up in arms? What if Games Workshop came out and they'd have every legal right to do so? And they said, tell you what, we're not, se we're not selling to anybody. We're only just, it's just direct through us or it's nothing. In other words, they went just like Forge World is and they went direct. Now, so the question is, well, why don't they do that? And uh, I'm not going to get into my guesses here. People are welcome to make comments on that. Uh, why doesn't Games Workshop, if they're making more money where with a consumer down here, an individual going directly to their website, so basically they crank out a Land Raider for $5. Oh, let's make it 10 and then they sell it to you for $85. That's the sweetest margin that there is. And uh, by the way, this is a guess. I don't know what their whole thing is. Obviously, there's a lot of overhead. Um, so I think what's happened is Games Workshop has allowed these independent retailers to basically bear the brunt of the invest to lay down an infrastructure for them and then later on go in and replace them. Back in the 90s, 
when my rep was like giving me a hard time, I was like, you know what? What you've done to the distributors, someday you're gonna do that to the retailers. So I put a prediction out there that they cut these guys out. They said, you know what? We're gonna give you the same deal. Distributors, we're gonna give you the same deal we give these retailers, but that's it. That someday they'll do the same thing to the independent retailers. They'll say, and by the way, and I'm not GW bashing here. I'm just trying to give some sort of context to what it is. Because for me, it's, there. Uh, by the way, there's an incredibly personal level to this. And I think that companies should be nice and community oriented. And, and look at my company. That's, we're, if anything, we put out, we put out too much personal information. So um, anyway, uh, my prediction was eventually they would, they would say the same thing to the independent retailers. They say, well, you know, you've got the same privileges as the next layer down. You can buy it for full retail and carry it in your store. But obviously that won't work, will it? But it's all about, it's all about the, the, the way to get their product out there at the best margin. And so, but what's happening is instead of doing it in one giant pull, they're, I, I believe they're, they're doing it slowly. They're cooking the frog slowly this time that uh, they are, they're making the deal like worse and worse for the independent retailers just by stages, by saying, well, you know what, now you can't, you can't get bits at the same discount as the other stuff. That's only 30% off, not 45% off. And, and then they start moving things more to direct only and more to bits and more to specialty items. So slowly they're, they're eroding these independent retailers but to make the jump, an independent retailer like has to, you know, the, the market's just not ready for that. And I think uh, if people think Games Workshop is act, acting irrationally, I assure you that is not the case. A huge amount of study and thought goes into all of these decisions. And that it is guided, uh, dare I say properly so, by the interests of the shareholders. So that's that's the invisible person that's being, I think, ignored in all of these discussions, is you have GW, but behind GW, you have a zillion, you have individuals, little people. I shouldn't put boxes here. You've got all the people that bought GW stock. I don't know how many there are, but I bet there's a lot. And those people are just as human as these people down here, the consumers. They've made a deal. They said, we'll, we'll take part of our life and our assets and our resources, we'll put it into your company to make a better product, and if the market responds and says, we believe in your product, we're willing to give you our money and our life and our resources, then it goes, it goes back up to them. So when you're considering all of this, because I think people are getting really emotional about it, and I understand that. I'm a very emotional person, and I, you know, I, I really believe in the human aspect of this industry and I love it and I want to be part of that. And uh, I really, there's a magic sort of community to this and, it, it, and it's true, there, it, it is a community. So, but the problem is now you've got kind of this veil here where these shareholders who have monetary interests pretty much, and maybe a lot of them have, that's it. They just bought this stock because they thought it would perform well. So it becomes a public company. And uh, back to Blue Table Painting, my plan is to not go public. I've already set up my thing that I think sounds like fun and that will fit my agenda for my life. Uh, I'm 43. I think with nanotechnology, I might make it to 120, possibly 200. And, uh, and, and I'm not particularly attached to this life, but it, uh, to this material world. But if I'm gonna be here, it's gonna be awesome. I'm not just gonna sit around. So anyway, back to this. Uh, oh, Blue Table Painting is uh, really, it's gonna be privately, literally, we're a mom and pop operation. What happens, to, what happens to Blue Table Painting happens to me, my wife, and my four kids. We, we suffer visible and immediately immediate effects, suffering both good and bad, in the general sense of the word, right? We, we get an effect immediately with whatever happens uh, with the company. Uh, so um, anyway, and I, I, think that, I think that's a good mode. And this is going to launch into my next video uh, where I'm going to talk about the industry in general and I'm going to talk more about life. And so anyway, 
Um, so that's kind of that's that's what's going on. I'm still predicting that there'll be a magic point where GW will eventually have no use for the independent retailers, and that that will be that that will be a little crass because the independent retailers really have put into GW. But let's think about the reverse too. If all of a sudden, let's say if all of a sudden another company appeared, um, and by the way, I would love to do this. I think it would take about, I don't know, if I had to say I'd say between 600 and 800 million dollars to actually come out head to head against Games Workshop and put out a full, full on competing product. Um, so let's say that appeared. In this alternate universe, another company comes in that's putting out something just as awesome as Games Workshop, but they're offering it for 10% greater profit margin. So here's my question. If an independent retailer went with, games, with company B instead of Games Workshop, and they dropped Games Workshop entirely, would this company be acting in a immoral fashion? Um, right? So what I'm saying is the reverse is true too. An independent retailer is an entity and they're looking out for their own interests. This gets back to the concept of corporations, which is an independent retailer that is incorporated, even though he may be the sole shareholder, it may be a small company, he still has a vested interest and he has a responsibility to act in the best interests of his own company. Now your best interest may be being nice to people, and by the way, I thoroughly believe in that. I believe the real currency of the war games industry is goodwill. And, uh, that, and that's what makes it so special, is that we're in a, like I go to Adepticon, and I put competing painting services on my channel. Why would I do that? Why on earth would I do that? Well, there's a philosophical reason, there's a personal reason, and there's a business reason. And do you want to know what those are? The philosophical reason is that I don't believe that resources are limited. I believe that the universe is full of atoms and that it's human minds that are limited. So there's plenty of fish in the sea. And the personal reason is I think it's fun. I do not, I don't like the idea of living in a universe where you gotta cut other people's throats to get ahead. I, I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. And then of course the third one is there is a real business reason is the nature of the beast for the war games industry is people are nice for the most part and they are and there's there's an econ there's an economy to that so more on that later so anyway so you can't get all worked up about this games workshop is a full on company they've because they have lawyers they have board meetings a lot of these decisions are happening in a very mechanical way there isn't somebody at these board meetings going think about the fans there's somebody at the board meetings going, think about the fans because we need their money. And uh, so that's, that's where I think things are going. I think uh, that, that Games Workshop's model is going to in, end up basically like a Forge World model. And, but see, you notice that? No one's, no, one's, no one's going off the deep end about Forge World. They won't tell their products and say they screw over the retailer, blah, 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 blah. No, they're just, because it's always been that way. Whenever there's a change, people get upset. So, um, anyway, back to Mini Wargaming. Mini Wargaming is an awesome company. They were so good to us. They came out to Valhalla of October last year, and we just absolutely loved them. We have a, mmm, we got a good relationship with them. And, uh, and, but the fact is, they got a lot of other things going on. And I choose to look on the bright side, which is Mini Wargaming is now going to really concentrate on areas where it's more profitable for them. Because, and sometimes in a relationship, it's just time to say goodbye. When that margin gets thinner and thinner and it just isn't fun anymore, then you know, you've got to reevaluate uh, re your motives and what you're in it for and, uh, you know, and, and move on. And move on because... Uh, and in a positive way, without any rancor, and uh, you know, the, when one door opens, when one door closes, another door opens. 
and uh, that really is the way of things. And with mini war gaming, they're not going away. They're going. They're going to re. They're going to shift gears. They're going to retool, and they're going to gun out of this thing stronger than ever. You'll see. They're coming out to Valhalla in October, and it's really, really going to be absolutely fantastic. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I look forward to your comments. Sir, fill, fill me in if I've missed something. And uh, I would just encourage all of you in this situation to look on the bright side and in general to look on the bright side of life.